So at this point we have seen uh, the first version, a kind of a high level version of the prolog control algorithm. But what we want to do now is to go into more detail. So, uh, we have here a function or procedure that we call visit. And uh, g is the current goal that we're going to visit. And the reason why call the, we call this visit is because we are going to visit a particular node in, a, in the prolog search tree. That's the idea behind this uh, algorithm or this procedure that G stands for a goal which is which uh, is in, indeed a node in the prolog search tree. Uh, if the, and then it says, uh, the code says, if the current goal G is non-empty then we split G up to sub-goals G1, G2, up to GK. So in our previous example this would be our G and we split it up to G1 and G2. And we choose the leftmost subgoal, as we did earlier. We could choose G1. G1 would be our leftmost subgoal. Then, for i is equal to 1, up to the number of rules, we so this for loop is used to go all to, through all the rules that are applicable to the sub called uh, uh, G1. Uh, oh, sorry. We we basically going through all the rules of the the database itself, and uh, the format of the rule is such that A is the the left hand side of the rule, and B1 up to Bj is the is the right hand side of the rule. And then if one if a rule applies to G1, if we can apply some rule in the database to G1, which, uh, where G1 is the leftmost subgoal, then we have to find the unifier of G1 and A. Remember, we talked about earlier in earlier lectures that unification is at the heart of the prolog algorithm when we try to unify two terms. In this case we are unifying G1 and A, where G1 is the leftmost subgoal and A is the left hand side of some rule. And uh, <coughs> well we will take uh, an example in a minute where this will become clearer. <coughs> and once we have a unifier, we apply that unifier to the right hand side of the rule A that we selected. So we apply the unifier to B1, to B2, up to Bj, and we also apply the unifier to the remaining subgoals, G2, G3, up to Gk. And the result of this, by applying the unifier to the rest of the right hand side of the rule and to the rest of the subgoal, of to the rest of the subgoals, uh, the result of that is a new current goal, which we call here G prime, and then we call our visit uh, recursively using G prime as the current subgoal. And this we do over and over again until the current goal is empty. Now once it becomes empty, there's nothing more to prove and we succeed. And the backtracking mechanism is actually taken care of uh, uh, Automatically, automatically because we're using a recursion. So once we visit a particular uh, node here, 
G prime, which stands for a new current goal, and uh, we come back after that recursive call, we would try another rule which may be apl applicable to the goal G1. So the backtracking mechanism is uh, we, we, we get that kind of for free by using uh, a recursive solution here. So let's uh, take an example now. Oh, sorry, not, not uh, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, so uh, we're saying that when Prolog is finding a solution, uh, it's kind of building a search tree. Uh, and the search tree depicts computations that explore all possible solutions to a goal. And then the nodes in a search tree represent the goals. Uh, a node has a child for each rule that applies to the leftmost sub-goal at the node. So, a node has a child for each rule that applies to the leftmost sub-goal. So, for example, if uh, in, in this query, drinks John, X, drinks Tom, X, then this would be the root of the search tree. And then this particular node, the root node, would have a child that applies to the leftmost sub-goal. So, we saw earlier that drinks John, Coke is one possibility, so that would be uh, that would be, we would form a new node which, which would be a child of the original query uh, for this uh, fact and we would build a new node that uh, when using the second fact. So a node has a child for each rule that applies to the leftmost subgoal. Our leftmost sub goal was drink John comma X and we would have two children because we have two possible rules here. And the order of the children is the same as the rule order in the database. We have already discussed that, that the, the order matters. Now the, the search tree is explored in depth first manner, which means that we start at the root and then we explore the subtree uh, at the children of each node from left to right. And we do this recursively, we always do it from left to right and that's why this is depth first search. Uh, and the computation produces a true response each time it reaches a node in the subtree with an empty goal. Of course, this should be node with a D. So once we have an empty goal, we the pro the algorithm uh, returns true or succeeds, because if the current goal is non-empty, then it will do something. But if it's empty, the algorithm succeeds. So now let's take an example here. Uh, let us uh, consider uh, the prolog algorithm re with regard to the following rules here and facts. So we have the append relation, which is actually a built-in uh, uh, relation in, in prolog. And we have, we have already discussed that one uh, in previous lectures. And then we have a prefix and a suffix relation where prefix x comma z is true if append x comma y comma z is true and suffix of y comma z is true if append of x comma y comma z is true. So what does this mean? Well, we're saying that uh, some list x is a prefix of z if 
we can append some list y to x and the result is set. So let me consult this program which is actually only the prefix and suffix relations. And uh, let's take an example. If I do prefix is the list 1, 2, is it a prefix of the list 1, 2, 3? Yes, it is, because when proving that the list 1, 2 and the list 1, 2, 3 is the prefix relation, Prolog needs to find a list y that once appended to the list x gives us the list set. And that's basically the list that contains only y, oh, sorry, only 3, because this is in the append relation. Append, when I append the list 3 to 1, 2, I get 1, 2, 3. So when proving the prefix query, this is the query that I post, it will be transformed to proving the append relation, which is this particular one here. It, it is actually what it's doing, it's actually trying to prove uh, a, a query like this, because or why, because why is unknown. But then it will say y is 3. And for the suffix part, we're asking, is there a list, say, is there some list uh, 2, 3, which is a suffix of the list 1, 2, 3, and yes. So suffix y comma set, then the question is, can I append y to some x to get set? Yes, I can append the list 1. I'm basically asking this question. Can I append some x to the, can I, can I append the list 2 comma 3 to x to get 1, 2, 3? Yes, when x is 1. So th these are our prefix and suffix relations, and uh, we're going to use those in our example here. And the query that we're going to pose is this one here. Suffix a comma l, prefix l comma a comma b comma c. So suffix a comma l comma prefix l a comma b comma c. And so what am I asking? I am asking is a suffix is the list that contains only a a suffix of the list l uh, and that list l is also a prefix of the list a comma b comma c and what I get back is l can be a because uh, the list that contains only a is a suffix of itself and that list is also a prefix of the list a comma b comma c. So now we're going to look at how Prolog finds this uh, solution by using the algorithm. So let me show you the algorithm here. So this is the al our algorithm. And our goal is this one here. This is our first goal. And according to the algorithm, suffix a comma l is the leftmost subgoal g1. It says if the current goal g is non-empty, then we split g up to individual subgoals g1 up to gk, in our case g1 and g2, and we choose the leftmost subgoal g1. 
So we have suffix relation being G1 and prefix relation being G2. And we now choose the only applicable rule for this sub goal. Remember how, uh, that our database consisted of only two rules, prefix and suffix. And so the applicable rule is the, is the suffix rule, which uh, looks like this, suffix y, z is true if append x, y, z is true. And if we go back to the algorithm, it says uh, if a rule applies to G1, the rule looks like this, that we have A on the left-hand side and then we have B1 up to Bj on the right-hand side. In our case, this is our A, this is the left-hand side of the rule, and this is B1 on the right-hand side. Notice that we only have a single goal on the right-hand side, we does, do not have B1 or B, and B2, we only have B1. So suffix is A and append is B1. So this is the left-hand side and this is the right-hand side, B1. And if a rule applies to G1, if this, if this rule that we're selecting applies to our sub goal G1, then we have to find the unifier that unifies G1 and A. We have to find the unifier that unifies G1, which is suffix A, L, and suffix y comma z and this is understandable because uh, if we are going to use this rule to prove suffix a comma l then we have to be able to unify these two terms so how can we unify suffix a comma l with suffix y comma z well we can unify it if y is substituted with A, the list A, and Z is substituted with L. And that's what we have written here. The unifier is Y maps to A or Z maps to L. And re recall, if we apply this unifier to both this term and this term, we will get the same thing. Once Y maps to A, and set my maps to L, these two terms will be the same. Now, if we go back to the algorithm. Once we have found the unifier of uh, G1 and A, we have to apply that unifier to the right-hand side of the rule. This is the right-hand side of the rule. This is our B1. So we, we apply this unifier to B1. When we apply this unifier to B1, X doesn't change because X doesn't map to anything, but Y is mapped to A, the list A, and Z is mapped to L. So we will get append X, Y becomes the list A and Z becomes L. Here we have then list A and here we have L. Now we could have written X here, but Prolog uses an, an internal variable, so let me just call it underscore L1 here. And so what is this? This is B1 applied to uh, the unifier. Sorry, this is the result of applying the unifier to B1. Once again in the algorithm applying the unifier to the right-hand side. And since our right-hand side has only one term, well, there's nothing that needs to be done uh, 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 for the rest of the terms. There's, there's no B2 or B3 and so on. Uh, now, notice that this is not the only thing that needs to be done because we have to apply the unifier to the remaining parts in the original goal. Our original goal consisted of G1 and G2 in our case. If we go back, what was our original goal? It was suffix, which was G1, and was prefix, that was G2. So now we have to apply the unifier that was found also to the uh, 
second goal. And why is that? Well, I'm we have we have uh, uh, found a unifier that applies to this current call g1. That means we might have mapped these variables here to some new values, and those variables uh, are also might also be part of the uh, second sub goal, and those variable then would need to be instantiated as well. Now in our case prefix L comma ABC the, the, the L variable is not mapped to anything. So in that case applying the unifier to G2 doesn't change anything. When we have this, so this part prefix L comma ABC is the resul result of applying the unifier to G2. When we apply this unifier to the prefix part, L is not mapped to anything, so the, the, the relation doesn't change, or this term doesn't change. But the current goal, G prime, is now the result of applying the unifier both to the right hand side of the rule and to the right hand side of the, of the remaining subgoals. So now we have a new goal. Now Prolog needs to, uh, to prove this part. And uh, we call the algorithm recursively now with G prime. And now the question is, what is the, if we go back to the algorithm, we, we are, we're calling our visit procedure again, and the current goal is non-empty now, and we split up the goal to G1 and G2 uh, as we did earlier and we choose the leftmost sub goal G1. So if this is our G or G prime the leftmost sub goal is now the append relation. And then a rule we go through all the rules and we try to find an applicable rule. So if a rule applies to G1, if a rule applies to the append relation then the first applicable rule is, in our case, if we go back, it's the append rule. It's a, it's a, it's a fact where we have append Let me just copy this. So we have a fact here. And the question is, can we unify this leftmost sub goal G1 with this fact? Uh, yes, we can do that if the internal variable underscore one maps to the empty list and my y here, or I call it y prime here, maps to the list A. And then this y here maps to L. But if y maps to A and y maps to L, then L maps to A. So I've just written here L maps to A. So this is the unifier for these two terms. And uh, once again, if we go to the algorithm, once, if we have found the unifier, we have to apply the unifier to the right-hand side of the uh, relation. But notice that the fact is the, the the rule that we applied is a fact. So there is no right-hand side. That means that we have proven this part. We don't have to transform this part to some right-hand side of a rule because there is no right-hand side. So a fact doesn't have a right-hand side, and therefore we only have to apply the unifier to the remaining part 
in the sub goal and the remaining part in the sub goal is this one prefix part but the prefix part does have an L and the L maps to something in our unifier this L maps to an A the, to the list A so the current sub goal becomes prefix list of list A and ABC why was that? because this L maps to an A according to our unifier so this is our current sub goal now and what happens we have to visit the node for that one and we call our proceed to visit again is the current goal empty? Uh, no so let G be G1 up to GK actually our goal consists of only a single sub goal and when we choose the first applicable rule for this one it is the prefix rule here and we are trying to uh, unify this term prefix list a with the list abc to this header prefix x comma set can we find a unifier for this one uh, yes if we map this x to the list a and map this set to the list abc we have a unifier and we apply that unifier to the right hand side why to the right hand side because the right hand side is our b1 uh, sigma here b1 sigma is the is the result of applying the unifier to b1 so this x is maps maps to an a this y is not mapped to anything i call it here underscore 2 for an internal variable and then this set is mapped to the list ABC I just apply the unifier to the B1 term on the right hand side so now we have a new uh, current goal which is this one and we need to find an applicable rule for it and according to our database the fact will not is not applicable but I can use this rule here how can I how can I unify these two terms well if I map h here the variable h to a h is the header to the the element a x which is the tail i map it to the empty list because this is this is a list that only contains one element i map y here to this internal variable 2 and i map uh, set to the tail of the list ABC then I have a unifier this is how I can unify this term with the header of the rule and once again I have once I if I have a unifier go back to the algorithm we apply the unifier to the right hand side so I apply the unifier to this part and it will give me what was x well x maps to the empty list what is y y maps to the internal variable 2 and set maps to bc so now this is my current goal and once i can once again i have a new current goal i call the visit procedure again uh, and then finally this is my current goal and it's not empty and I can use now I can use the first rule for append which is this one here and how can I unify the question is can I unify this these two terms yes 
you can see already that there's an empty list here as the first part so that's fine so if I map Y to the list BC and this internal variable 2 to the list BC then I have a unifier and uh, what do we get then if I'm able to use this fact here I'm basically getting this as a result this is true because I'm using a fact and it, once I use a fact then the current goal becomes empty so the current goal is now empty and the final the algorithm uh, returns true because I called visit here once again with an empty uh, goal and it says here if the current goal is non-empty then it has to do something but if it's empty it succeeds so it's able to prove uh, the whole uh, it's able to prove the the original query that we started with and this search tree here or basically what we actually did we, we went through the individual steps of the algorithm and uh, we could have written it up as a search tree actually from the start we started with this original query here suffix a comma l prefix l comma a comma b comma c this was the first uh, leftmost sub goal uh, sorry here is the root of the tree this was the mo leftmost sub goal that one was transformed to an append uh, relation using this particular unifier and the the root node was converted to this node which we then sent into the visit procedure the append relation was then the leftmost sub goal and we were able to use a fact for that one and we used this unifier for it for it you can you can go back and, and check this yourself and since we were able to use a fact for append the remaining thing to be proved was the prefix part and that's why we have a prefix uh, part here and notice that this l according to the unifier is mapped to an a and that's why we have list a here so we needed to prove prefix and we were able to do that we converted prefix to an append relation by using this unifier and the append node here was converted to a new append by using the second rule for append and a particular unifier and finally this uh, append relation uh, was proved by using a fact uh, in particular using this unifier that the internal variable 2 maps to bc and y, and y maps to bc and that's how we were able to use this fact here to prove it and at that point our current goal is empty and there is nothing more to prove <laughs>